Hi everyone, Robert Kajiwara here. Today is Lakuokoa, or Hawaiian Independence Day. So I thought I would ask our good friend, Leon Siu, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hawaiian Kingdom, to come on and share a few words about what Lakuokoa is and why it's still important for Hawaiians to this day. Minister Siu, thanks so much for joining, joining us. Oh, oh, aloha. Good to be here. Mahalo for inviting me. And it, on this auspicious day, this is one of the biggest holidays of the Hawaiian Kingdom. And I'm always glad to talk about it because it is an extraordinary day or extraordinary accomplishment for which we uh, use this day to, to honor and to recognize and celebrate. Yeah, so of course, on July 31st every year, Hawaiians celebrate La Hoi Hoi Ea. Right. And could you please explain the difference to people who might not uh, be familiar with the two? What is the okay. difference between the two? Okay, 1843 was a pretty tumultuous year in, in the Hawaiian Kingdom. A man named Lord George Paulette was a commander of a, a naval vessel of the, for the Royal Navy, uh, was in Honolulu at the time, and he was hearing some complaints by some local um, lo people, uh, residents, British residents who live in Hawaii, and they were complaining that they couldn't uh, get lands and, and things like that. Uh, they couldn't uh, acquire lands. And so uh, Paulette decided he would just take over Hawaii. And he had a gunship, of course, in, in, in the harbor, and therefore he threatened uh, the king, who was Kamehameha III, and just uh, basically said, I'm taking over the, the country and stand down. Uh, Kamehameha III uh, did so. I'm not even sure if he was here in Honolulu at the time. I think he was in Lahaina. But basically, he told everybody, just keep cool heads and we'll work this out diplomatically. He had already dispatched a group uh, or a team of uh, emissaries from Hawaii, three men. He had dispatched them to uh, go to the United States and then on to England um, and to Europe to um, negotiate with the, uh, with the powers that be at the time, particularly uh, uh, the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of France and the United States to negotiate uh, recognition of our sovereignty as a sovereign nation. So he had already dispatched that, that team a year earlier, and they were traveling at that, that time to uh, Great Britain. So by the time Paulette took over the Hawaiian Islands, took control of the Hawaiian Islands, um, our team of, um, or our uh, diplomatic representatives were already in England. Um, and they received word sometime later about the takeover. Anyway, but uh, so Paulette decided he would take over the kingdom. Um, five months after he had done so, uh, Admiral Thomas was dispatched. Uh, I believe he was headquartered at that time, either in Chile or, or Mexico. But anyway, he was dispatched from the Royal Navy to set things right, because by this time, news had arrived in England. They were dispatched and um, he, uh, Admiral Thomas came to the Hawaiian Islands to Honolulu and um, met with King Kamehameha III and told him that he was sent to restore the kingdom. So they had a, an official ceremony at a place um, called, now called Admiral Thomas Square. And that is in the middle of, of Honolulu. And so uh, Thomas, Admiral Thomas uh, conducted a ceremony in which they lowered the British flag, which Paulette had erected. And they um, basically, he told Paulette that to that that he was now discharged from from his uh, seizure of the, of the Hawaiian Islands, um, and so Admiral Thomas put it back right, and so he declared that the Hawaiian Kingdom was still in in continuity and in effect. Uh, they then retired. Uh, they went in a procession to Kawaihao Church, where there was a special church service honoring and, and celebrating this event. Uh, it was during that service that uh, King Kamehameha III uttered the words, Uamao keea o kaaina i kapono, which means the sovereignty of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. Uh, so therefore, uh, all, all things are put back right again, and the celebration lasted for 10 days after that, 
of the restoration of the Hawaiian kingdom. So La Ho'i Ho'i Ea means uh, a restoration day. And so that's what it, it per pertains to. Now, meanwhile, the work going on in, in England uh, and in communications with France uh, was ongoing. And by the latter that part of that year, on, no on November 28th, uh, uh, the Kingdom of uh, the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of France issued their joint proclamation uh, claiming that the Hawaiian Kingdom was a sovereign nation. And so that recognition was significant uh, because these were the two most powerful nations on the planet at the time. And, and they were also the ones that had actually validated the United States sovereignty a few years earlier. Um, so this was the, 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 these were the two countries that you needed to validate your sovereignty. So that's what uh, happened. And uh, so that day on November 28th became known as La Kuokoa, which means uh, Independence Day. So uh, again, uh, King Kamehameha III proclaimed La Kuokoa as a national holiday, and it's always celebrated on, on November 28th. Um, and uh, again, there was a large, long celebration that went on in Honolulu at the time. Um, and uh, the celebration was significant because it was uh, establishing the fact that Hawaii was now without a doubt a sovereign country. The significance of that is that we were now treated and considered as equals to Great Britain and France and the other powers of the world who were mostly colonial powers at the time. So by, by being a part of that club, which is kind of loosely called the family of nations, um, and Hawaii was the first non-European or Eurocentric nation to become part of the family of nations. And therefore, we, pe we became part of that co actually colonial club, which meant that Hawaii was no longer um, a fair uh, game for colonialism. So Hawaii could not be colonized. Uh, what and the reason, and this is the reason that uh, Kamehameha III had actually taken this step, was because he was seeing all the other nations in the Pacific being colonized by Great Britain and France and Germany and several other countries taking up portions of, of well different uh, nations in in the Pacific. So he wanted to ensure that Hawaii would not fall into that, and he accomplished that great feat by uh, having sent his emissaries and having them accomplish uh, this recognition by the two uh, biggest states. Now, shortly after that, even prior to that, the United States had already indicated that they would recognize the Hawaiian uh, kingdom as a sovereign nation. And in fact, we had a treaty already ongoing since 1826. But in, in 1846 was when the United States made it formal and, and issued a, a standalone proclamation of the sovereignty of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Now, after that initial um, recognition of our sovereignty, the Hawaiian Kingdom then started entering into treaty making with different countries around the world, particularly those that were considered the family of nations. So by the end of the 19th century, or 1890s, um, the Hawaiian Kingdom had over 40 treaties, either unilateral or multilateral treaties, with, uh, treaties with 40 or, or more than 40 countries. Um, and those treaties, as far as we can tell, are still enforced today, even though those nations no longer want to formally recognize the treaties still exist they were never abrogated. That is, they were never canceled. So as far as we know, they are still in existence today. And it gives us the basis for how we can communicate with other countries in the world, because we technically, we still are treaty partners, and technically we still are a sovereign uh, independent state. Besides the 40 treaties, we had over 130 uh, diplomatic outposts, that's either embassies or consulates around the world. 
this is by the end of the 19th century. So Hawaii was a very well represented um, nation in the family of nations. Our sovereignty recognized back in 1843, formally recognized, has still not been uh, uh, extinguished or diminished, really. All, all, all that has happened with us is that we've sort of been put on the side for the time being. And uh, so now is a time when we can actually, as we celebrate uh, our, our holidays like La Ho'i'o'i'a and La Ku'okoa, we actually begin to remind ourselves and we begin to reinforce within ourselves the idea that we are still a sovereign country. And by doing this, we can actually set our minds toward the work ahead of us in restoring that, that uh, sovereign and independent uh, condition within our country.